everybody, it is Julie. Welcome back to Pages and Pens. Today I have for you one of the first videos, although I am planning on filming more, that might ruffle some feathers. So today I have my very first unhaul. It is time to get rid of some and unfortunately I had to be kind of brutal in my cuts. It's my first ever true purging of books. Before you ask, no, I'm not going to be sending any of these out. I have a friend that's coming from out of town who's super, super bookish. She's going to look through, see if there's anything in here that she wants. After that, whatever's left over is going to go to a secondhand bookstore. I'm going to sell them back to the secondhand bookstore for credit. And then I'm going to get more books to review for you guys. So it's win, win, win. That is my plan. I'm not sending these away to anybody. However, if you are looking for books and you want me to send you some books, then be sure to enter my giveaway. Everything will be linked down below and I'll link my giveaway video right up there. It is my 2000 subscriber giveaway. Thank you so much for subscribing. So just know that if I am unhauling one of your favorite books, not every book is for every reader. And some of these I did like, like I said, but I just don't think I'm going to reread. So I need to go ahead and purge. And I'm just not a big rereader, so a lot of this just has to go. I think when I counted earlier, I had 28 books that I'm unhauling. So let's jump into it and I'll show you what I am getting rid of. First up is The Book of Ember, and this is by Jean Duprow. I've never read this. This is The City of Ember, The People of Sparks, and The Prophet of Yonwood. A Borders exclusive. It's a three volume, three book bind up. I just know I'm never going to pick this up. Then I have Love at First Click, The Ultimate Guide to Online Dating by Laurie Davis. And I've never read this one either. I got sent this when I was running an online magazine for women. And when I was doing my own website of dating and relationship advice. So I ran into somebody who authored this and they said, let me send you this you know, can I send you my book? And I said, absolutely, send me your book. Then I never read it. I'm sorry, but I'm never going to read that. Then I am unholing Find You in the Dark by A. Meredith Walters. I will link my review to this up there. I did not enjoy this. When I did my makeup book tag, I put this as one of my most like cringeworthy books just because I, the romance in this was all, I just hated this. Then I'm getting rid of Mrs. Moneypenny. This is career advice for ambitious women. And I had this when I was a female entrepreneur and I had a business to run and I thought this would be helpful. I ended up really not getting much from that. Same with the girl's guide to being a boss without being a bitch. Which first of all, can we all discuss the fact that this title is just, I mean, whatever. Caitlin Friedman and Kimberly Yario. Yorio. I don't know. And then I'm getting rid of Ashes on the Water by Mary Lindsay. It was really bad. It was about a girl on an island who I don't think could get off of the island. And then there were skin shifters, shape shifters. Nope. This is another one that I never read, guys. I went through like a phase where I was like, I'm going to better myself. I'm going to read all these books. They're going to be life changing. This is May Cause Miracles by Gabrielle Bernstein. And I'm never going to read it. I'm just not. Then I'm getting rid of The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I read it once. Once you read something like this once, you don't really need to reread it. And I didn't really like it unreliable narrators and all that. Uh, same with these two guys. And this is bad because I'm unhauling these books before I've even done my series wrap up. This was in my wrap up for November. This was in my wrap up for October. I'm reading maybe the third one. I did get it from the library and I felt bad that they shipped it to me and that I wasn't going to read it. So I may finish out the trilogy, but regardless, I'll never reread these. I don't want them in my life. I don't like them. I'm getting rid of them. Also getting rid of 13 Reasons Why. This is by Jay Asher. I don't know. I know a lot of people really like this book. I think I read it at the wrong time. I read it a couple weeks after my 16 year old cousin did kill herself. And I just, I think it angered me more than it helped me. And I just didn't, I was not in the right mindset to read this. And I know that I'm not going to reread it because it's just going to take me back to that time and place. So I just am not going to keep this one around. I'm also getting rid of Stay Awake. This is by Dan Kayon. Kayon. Chon? Chown. I don't know how to say this name. I could not stay awake long enough to read this. 
is what you can't stay awake for. Dazzling short stories and they were haunting, suspenseful stories, lost, fragile, searching characters that wander between ordinary life and a psychological shadow land. So it was about grief and loss and loneliness and disconnection and displacement and finding themselves in the unexpected and sometimes unfathomable situations that they found themselves in. It sounded so good. I picked it up with such high hopes and I could not get through this. So I'm getting rid of it. I I don't very often start and not finish a book, but I couldn't handle that one. This one I know is going to my friend when she gets into town. And this is How to Be a Woman by Caitlin Moran. Listen, I was running a magazine for women, by women, trying to empower women. I am all about female empowerment. I am a feminist and I don't have a problem saying that as one. This was like the Chelsea Handler of feminism. It was a comical tale about being a young girl, going through puberty, going into adulthood, but it was not necessarily what I would call a feminist tale. It wasn't necessarily empowering. So I will pass that one along. I'm also getting rid of A Shadow Bright and Burning by Jessica Cluess. And this one I did review. I didn't love it. I thought it had a lot of potential and that it just really fell flat for me. So I know that there's other books in this series. I don't think I'm going to be continuing with the series. If I do, I'll probably get them from the library. It's not going to be one that I want to keep on my shelves. So unfortunately, it's a gorgeous cover. I paid full price for this at Barnes & Noble, but I'm going to get rid of this. Also going to get rid of this little pocket edition book of Remade. This should come as no surprise to you, but I'm getting rid of this garbage. I'm sorry if this is your favorite book. I know it's a lot of people's favorite book. I go into why I don't like this in my wrap up. It angers me to see it. Like when a book makes you angry, it shouldn't make you angry. I can't handle it. Same goes for this piece of yuck. This is Soundless by Michelle Mead and it is horrible. Nope. I'm also getting rid of First Life. This is by Jenna Showalter. This is about a world where you have two different options for your afterlife and your first life is just a trial run so that you can decide where you want to go in your second life, which is where you'll spend the rest of eternity. And there's a girl who's supposed to tip the balance and she has to decide between which afterlife she wants to choose and she refuses to choose. And the whole time she's shoved into these horrible situations and being tortured and she refuses to choose, refuses to choose, and it's just it's awful. I'm also getting rid of Been There Done That by Carol Snow. I am also getting rid of Wicked Witch and Curse by Nancy Holder and Debbie Vicu. I won't continue the series. It really, it didn't grip me enough. Amanda and Nicole are sisters. Holly comes. They realize they're witches. They've got to try to like fight against this evil. I believe the evil is in like a guy who's dating their aunt or I don't, it's weird. And uh, it just didn't grip me enough to continue, but I did read it. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm also getting rid of The Edge of Never by J.A. Redmarski. This was in my November wrap up as well. This is a new adult contemporary and I just didn't like it enough to keep it. I'm never going to reread it. It wasn't horrible. If you want to read it, go ahead. I think I gave it three stars or two stars, but it's not going to be something that I ever reread. Same goes for this gorgeous piece of cover that I'm so upset about, which was The Great Hunt by Wendy Higgins. The cover is so much better than the book, you guys. It's just not great. So not going to reread it, getting rid of it. Same for this. This is Cecilia Ahern's Flawed. The concept is not bad. Everybody is apparently perfect and you get branded if you do something wrong. So if you lie, you get your tongue branded. If you steal, you get your hand branded. So she can't be flawed. I can't be flawed. I'm perfect. Guess what? She's flawed. I believe this is a series as well or there's more coming out or have come out. I'm not going to continue. So I'm also getting rid of Hollow City. I don't know where my original Miss Peregrine's book is. I finished the trilogy. The third book I listened to on audiobook from the library and I don't think I'm ever going to own it. I don't dislike this trilogy but I don't love it. I never got like crazy ridiculously on board with this series. I don't think I'll ever reread it. The next one is one that I actually did enjoy. It literally destroyed me. It stuck with me but I feel like I've read it and I've been there and I've done that and I don't think I'm going to ever have to reread it. So this is one that I will hopefully give to a friend if they want it. Forbidden by Tamitha Suzuma. At the heart of it, it's about a family of children with a very, very absent mother. The children have to raise themselves. The older siblings, a boy and a girl, end up really filling the role of mother and father and they fall in love and they start a relationship and the book kind of goes from there 
and it's heartbreaking. And then the last two books are the last two books of a series. I kept the first three guys. I said it before, I think I mentioned, I just don't like the way that this ended. So I'm getting rid of the crown and I'm getting rid of air, the air. So the air first and then the crown. So the first three books follow America and Maxon. The second two book, the last two books follow their children. And they just didn't need to exist. They were absolutely horrendous. And I like to think that the series just stopped after the third one. So those are the three I'm gonna keep and then the rest. <laughs> can go. And those are my 28 books and this allows me to make room for more books that I want to bring in to my collection which is important to me. I want to get rid of things that I don't think I'm going to read so that I can make room for things that I feel like I can read and enjoy and I think that this is going to be the way that I run things from now on. I want to only keep those things that I truly think at some point I will want to pick up and reread. And if I don't feel that way about a book then I'm going to get rid of it and just try to keep my collection a little bit slimmer. Does not mean that I hate these books, although some of them I hated, or that I don't think that they're worth reading. That's not the case. It's just a matter of me trying to keep my collection down because I have limited space to keep them. If you loved any of these books, I'm sorry. You guys can go ahead and comment down below. Feel free. I mean, you can yell at me, but everybody has differences of opinions. Remember, if you want me to send you books, that could potentially happen. I am picking three winners to send two of my favorite books of 2016 to. Follow the link down below, head to my website, enter the giveaway, and I could potentially be sending you two of my favorite 2016 reads. All right, everybody, if you like this video, be sure to give me a big old thumbs up, click subscribe, and I will see all of you in my next video. Mm -hmm.